joy. In the ultimate sense, Jesus even says in the Course that you need not even believe in Him, which is quite a, a statement. But in another way, I think uh, Pat was saying, you know, you could call it Coca-Cola <laughs> if you want. But the, but the thing is, in the sense, it's still that same universal spirit and will that we're talking about. So it was, as, it was as if he was saying, I, the Holy Spirit, because that's who was speaking through the person of Jesus. But I, the Holy Spirit, am the way, the truth, and the life. And the Holy Spirit is the truth that's within each of us whether we've ever heard of the person Jesus Christ or not. Or the Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Spirit, <laughs> right. The truth is still there. <laughs> yeah. Whether you, you know, are in China or India or, or an Aborigines or, you know. I had a real, a real argument with my cousin. I don't know what she had. I said the same thoughts, you know. I mean, we got in a real philosophical and religious conversation. And I said, now, Vic, I said, all these people in Africa that never heard of Jesus and whatever, they're all going to hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I was like, well, listen, you know, you kind of damned the, the whole, a lot of these folks out here. And I said, well, they never heard of Jesus. And I said, well, I don't think God operates that way, Dick. I just yeah, but really see, the scripture said he's revealed some things of the earth. Right. And if you have that expectation to find it, then by chance you might. But if you never seek it or you never expect it, then you'll never know it when you walk by it. And so, that's uh, the basis of what he's saying here about perception too. That's kind of like what you're looking for within. You know, what you're really sincerely, devotedly looking for within, you'll see without mm -hmm. in the world. So in other words, a lot of times people may even get into the, the trap of like comparing the course to the Bible. You know, and saying the Bible comes up short to the course. And basically what the course is, is saying, if you really apply what the course is saying, is what you look for, you'll find. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people that have used the Bible as the tool of, of their... The Bible says, voices. speak and you shall find. Not and, not you, yeah. shall be open. Be open. Mm -hmm. and, and all the Course does is kind of uses um, educational terms and psychological terms, and a little more so than the Bible, in a sense, to, to kind of get at the same initial thing. Mm -hmm. um, also, what Jesus does in, in the Course is there are certain um, statements in the Bible that he, he kind of reinterprets, that the ego has kind of used for its purposes. Because the, he says the ego loves to quote scripture. You know, there's a lot of things that have been taken out of context of the Bible and used in the name of fear and hell and damnation and everything. And Jesus is saying that's just a misinterpretation. Some of them that he's worked with are amazing to me because like I, there was one in here when I was reading Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's like, <laughs> and Jesus reinterprets it and says, it's like the Holy Spirit saying to you, my child, you know, give me that idea of vengeance. It doesn't belong in your holy mind. Vengeance is mine. Give it to me. I can handle it. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, is that a mm -hmm. interpretation of one that I, you know, had looked at as, as kind of a, as a very negative, condemning um, statement. And he does that in here with uh, things like with Judas, truth too, you know. He says, I never could have said, why betray a child the son of man with a kiss? Because I didn't believe in betrayal. You know, a lot of times you read the traditional Christian story, it seems like there's the 12 apostles and then there's the bad guy. There's the Judas, you know, who turned his, 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 on his master and everything. And Jesus is saying, in a sense, that the crucifixion was just an demonstra extreme demonstration that when the Father and the Son's wills are lined up, you can't kill the Son of God. You know, that the mind is all-powerful and the body is, is not. You know, it's, it's literally working. And, and in a sense, he reinterprets the crucifixion in the Course and says the only message to the crucifixion was teach only love. Now that's a pretty radical interpretation when, you know, the ego interprets the crucifixion as, you know, that one of God's beloved sons had to suffer and die to take, to be the Lamb of God, literally, to, to take all the sins of all the world on himself. An innocent um, son had to do it. And if you really trace that thinking back, you still get back to what kind of God is it that would have his innocent beloved son have to go through a, a suffering um, trial and turmoil in order for atonement or salvation. I always say, I don't want to have to get dinner with God if that's the kind of father that would, that would require that for atonement. And the Course is saying that basically, from Jesus' perspective, he did not perceive he was being attacked. Through the ego lens, it, it looks like when somebody is, is kicking you and, and spitting upon you and screaming, kill him, 
that this looks like an attack, but Jesus says, I did not share that perception. In other words, he saw it as just a call for love. You know, forgive them so they know not what they do. And he calls us to similarly change our perception so that we can have such a trained perception that we literally go beyond the perception of, of being attacked by people. And we see it, see everything as either a love or, or a call for love, <coughs> which is a real, you can see that takes a real highly uh, changed perception. You know, we were talking, Nick was talking tonight about the soul, seeing soul to soul. In a sense, is what the, the Course is saying is that when you realize that, that your brother's just calling out for love, instead of perceiving him as attacking you, then you will respond with love. And that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, not that you perceive attack and then somehow, out of the kindness of my heart, or because I'm a more advanced spiritual teacher, I'm out of the kindness of my heart, I'll forgive you. Jesus kind of says, that's not forgiveness. You know, you can call it what you want, but it's not, you know, true sense of forgiveness.